we don't. Man called last night and said he had some cows on the guy's hay meadow. And uh, we're gonna go get them all for him, whether we have to rope them or try to pin them or whatever. But they've been out for about three or four months now and they just kind of been free ranging. So we're gonna try to, I don't know, I guess we're gonna try to catch them. We're trying to get a game plan together right now and see what we're gonna do. I think all these cowboys are tired. So I'm gonna explain what's going on here. It's about 5.30 a.m. We drove 45 minutes to get here. And the guys are inside. They've been working for like four days straight, probably 12, 12 hour days, running cattle through the chutes. And this morning, they've got 30, I guess, road cows, you could say, that have been running through fences and ended up on piece of property that is not theirs and these guys are gonna go out try to catch these wild suckers in a hay field and I got to tell you I haven't seen it yet but I'm gonna say this is about the closest thing to an old-school cowboy that still exists you like what about when he first started I was like I was given a horse and a rope I wasn't even given a horse I had a pullover I was like, I was literally given a rope and a guy gave me a bottle of medicine and was like, hey, if you see something sick, like catch it and give it this. I had no fucking idea what I was doing. I mean, there's no point in riding four miles around the backside to come in on something that won't be there anyway. Fuck out of mm, that bull. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Nine of us. Yeah! <laughs> Some guy comes out, what the fuck are you doing on my plate? <laughs> no, it's gonna be nine of us. Like, yeah, we got him, boy. <laughs> We're gonna miss him three times. You bad. Don't fucking help him take a nap. There's a lot of problems that uh, city slickers don't think about. So far this morning, the cows they were trying to catch were in a field where pig hunters were last night and they're cutting hay this morning. So, I mean, obviously, if you're trying to hide, you're not going to be in a place where guns are going off and tractors are working. Thinking real serious about going and uh, going up to the hardest shop and we'll try to buy a new four wheeler. <laughs> <laughs> That's my plan. Jake, what are you going to do? Let's catch some cows. I'm going to go out. You going to take a nap? Yep. What about you, I'm with you, Jake. These what motherfuckers are dumb. What about you? Getting ready for the rodeo. He's got a rodeo tonight. I have a rodeo as well. We're not on the same team, though. That's We're really not. It's weird. Parker, what are you going to do? I'm going to go watch Gunsmoke. And then that. tomorrow we'll get a... We'll get a, We'll kind of be a little more energized and get a better game. Well, this in is the truck. phone call we're to on. let us know that it's about to go down. Hello. Okay. Sounds good. We're going to go ahead and unload here because that was uh, Caleb Norwood's cattle, the guy that was with us. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is the part where you... I'm just going to say stick with what you're good at. So I'm driving the truck. What I was told this morning, being a good horseman is really the trick to being a good cowboy. Something I've realized over the weekend is that video cannot always be shot stable or usable, especially handheld. And pictures are valuable. They're good for websites, magazines, Instagram, I mean, social media of any kind. Pictures are important. And also they can be printed and hung up on the wall, like they kind of last. So they're not as exciting as a video, but they have probably more uses than a video. And I'm just gonna shoot some pictures this morning because as fast as they're moving, the video's just gonna suck. Maybe we'll get some good pictures out of it. And then once they find the cow, that'll be exciting.
So there's cowboy code and then there's superstitions. Parker ended up walking his horse in, sold his hat, never wanted to touch it again. And now his horse is riding fine. There's quite possibly a beaver felt hat that's gonna get burned very soon. You got a little bit of diesel left in there. Hmm? It's you got a little it, bit of diesel left in there. It's because it was on our place that they pranked Chuck so bad yesterday because he did wear a baseball hat. It was still on the property. We're gonna be good from now on. This is job number two for the morning. There's a bull out there. They're gonna go run it down. And I'm gonna follow him with a camera. So I think the bull was a little outgunned on that deal. Plenty of manpower anyways. Hey, good work, man. Thanks, man. Check this out. There's an entire field of solar panels over there. Do you know how many acres of solar panels are there? 60. 60 acres of solar panels. So what I'm shooting on right now is a Panasonic DMC LX10. It's just a, a point and shoot in 4K and I'm curious how it, how the audio sounds for one and how the video looks. Like how if it can be color graded what kind of depth it has and if you're watching this on an iPhone none of it's going to make any sense but if you see it on like a big screen or a TV then you'll notice the depth of the shot it does have manual settings but I'm shooting in auto because I don't know how to use them right now and anyways I'm just curious it looks pretty good and it's got a you know a built-in built-in zoom on it a flip up screen I was going to take a picture, I was going to take a shot with my phone, but it is dead right now. Go back out to 24, we were at 108. Oh, that's 36 millimeter. <clears throat> so the 4K sensor is also cropped on this thing. Anyways, I'm freaking tired right now. We've been getting up at 5 in the morning and staying up till midnight for the last few days. Everybody's napping, and I think it's time to just, like, sit down and edit. I don't even have the patience to shoot something right now. Garrett told us this morning him and Dustin were getting ready for the rodeo and came out here tonight this is more of like a ranch rodeo kind of thing these guys go to work and then they come out here and compete doing what they do for work it's really a lifestyle it's just all there's been some good rides and some bad rides
What's your favorite part of this? Everything that we've done today. You do you do for work what you do for fun. That's exactly right. It's it's not no different besides it pays a little more if you win. So I don't know. I love, I love it all. Get to do it with you, buddies. It really is. It's a lot of fun. Are you on camera tonight? She's shy. This is Adrian. She's cooking all this awesome food for us. That's right. What's yeah. your What's your favorite part of like being out here in the country? Me. Oh my God. All right. So I've got to tell y'all, after hanging out all day, I'm very out of place and that's obvious. I'm trying to explain all this simple cowboy and stuff. But I've got to tell you, I think it's the family and the tight-knit group of people that raise cattle out here. There's not a lot of outsiders and honestly, people that are here don't come from very far away. It's multi-generation families. Garrett and his dad, work together all day and then they do for fun what they do for work. They're out here roping cows, which is how we started off the morning at 5.30. Our, our day started at 4.30 trying to get on the road so we were there before sunrise. Anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed this. I've been working on a project for CF Cattle Company they are raising sustainable beef and selling it directly to the consumer. And I will check it out, hippiecowbeef.com. We finally left the rodeo about midnight last night. I went to sleep and the cowboys that we were hanging out with all day, they got a call from the county. There were seven cows in the middle of the highway and they had to go out and catch them in the middle of the night. I mean, it's a lifestyle that takes a lot of work. You really gotta love it to keep doing it.